In about 10 more seconds. Still missing a couple folks. Five seconds. Stop at one minute. All right, B is right. Uh, a couple ways you can think about this. The easiest way is, uh, oh my gosh, we didn't say this actually. You know in your house, does your house all operate at the same current or all at the same voltage? Y'all know this? Did I say this last time? Yeah, so your house operates, everything in your house operates at 120 volts. And so if I consider my light bulbs, my power expression, B is VI, P is VI, I know that this value is constant. We'll talk about that next chapter. Hmm? Right. We'll talk about that next. Right. We'll talk about that next chapter. That's a separate sort of a separate system in your house. It's all in the breaking box, not a separate system. Well, it's a separate circuit. So you have a bunch of different circuits in your house, and some most of them operate at 120 volts, and then you're right, a couple of them do operate at 240 or 220. All right. We'll get into it next next chapter. We have a whole section on household circuits. All right, so uh, if power is big, then that means that your current is big. You can also think about, you know, the 100 watt bulb is just, it puts out more light, right? So you have to have more energy going through it, so that means you have more electrons. If you have more electrons, then that means that you're going to have a greater current. So the 100 watt bulb has a greater current. Which has uh, more resistance? Which has the biggest resistance? This is a question. So which has the big R, big resistance? Which of these, the 40, the 100, or are they both the same? The largest resistance. Stop at 45, 45. Oh, my goodness, we're all over the place. <laughs> all right. Uh, a is right, though. You can think about it mathematically. Uh, you know, we've already said that they have the, the same voltage, V equals IR. And we've already said that the 100 watt bulb has the biggest current. That means it's going to have a smaller resistance. So the biggest resistance then is going to be the 40 watt. But you can think about it just, you know, sort of qualitatively. Because if the 40 watt bulb puts out less power, that means that there are fewer electrons flowing through. So it must resist the flow of electrons more than the 100 watt bulb. In fact, so the, the objects or the devices in your house that have the smallest resistance, like on the order of just ohms, are going to be what type of devices? What are some examples of the devices in your home with the, the smallest resistance? What? Hair dryer, right? So your hair dryer is one of your, your most power consuming devices. It's like a thousand watts. Hair dryers, toasters, bathroom heaters. In fact, like if you look in your hair dryer, your bathroom heater, they're really just a coil of wire. Right, have you ever looked down the barrel of your hair dryer? Yeah, it just has like this coil of wire that runs around on the inside. And so it's not, it's just a coil of wire really. And it heats up and that's what gives you your, uh, your dry hair. All right. I have to think about this every morning when I dry my hair. <laughs> on the barrels of anything else. Right. If I used a hair dryer, I'd come in <laughs> every morning. All right. Let's try it next. We'll see some more of this in just a bit. All right. 50 ohm resistor is hooked up to a power supply of 150 volts. What is the power dissipated?
seconds huh yeah i thought the hood was open but it wasn't it's just the fan wasn't blowing so there could be toxic fumes permeating throughout the entire building right now and yeah it could be our last last hour together <laughs> no it was the prep the uh, storage room next door i guess we'll be the first one to right. Yeah, if I so if I keel over, you I'll just run, <laughs> screaming like banshees. <laughs> yeah, probably the place I'm probably. My wife would probably do it. All right. <laughs> well, he's dead. We gotta carry on. Try to resuscitate you. All right. So here we have three expressions for power. We have v squared over r. So you could do it that way. 150 squared over 50 is 450. Or you could find out what is the current. I is V over R. That's 3 amps. And then P is VI, which is 150 times 3, which is 40. Let's try this next one. Except for the circuits, this should be a pretty good test for y'all on Friday. Um, the circuits can be difficult, though. Mm -hmm. I like how you take the more difficult one first, and then you say everything else is just plain simple. <laughs> That'd be fair if you say it's the easiest. Yeah, no, that never turns out well, does it? <laughs> you always need to prepare, like you normally do. We <laughs> usually do pretty well, so. There's something very interesting that happened. This um, during the freeze, the only freeze we ever had. The great freeze of 2014. Yeah, the big freeze of 2014. That only happened about 20 years. <laughs> but, um, there's a giant rubber tree that's my mom's house. It all froze over. So all of it was dead. It was all of it besides the roots, and we had to go chop it down. Yeah. And uh, the limb. And it broke, and then the cell matter started to rot on the right. tree. Mm -hmm. So you chop and you go to move, and your hand would come. I know, it's all that. Like dead plant matter. Yeah, we're going to say, I'm that way. All right, guys, a few more seconds, okay? Stop it, like, say 1.30. Okay, this, is, this is the same circuit as in the previous question. So. Stop at 1.30. is right. Alright, so uh, here we already know the power is 450 watts. But you need to remember that a watt is a joule per second. So that's the same as 450 joules per second. So if I want to know the total energy, I'm just going to multiply this times time, which is 3 seconds. That'll cancel that and leave me with 1350 joules. So just remembering that definition of what is power is energy over time. Alrighty, well, let's try. We have some more concept test questions, so keep your clickers out. There aren't a whole lot, but uh, let's run through them right quick. Go on from there. Chapter 3. So, what is the correct way to light the light bulb? This is a battery with normal, like C or D cell batteries. What's the correct way to light the light bulb? These are in the back of your book if you want to follow along there. Why you have only two choices? 
No, it's A, B, and C. Yeah, A, B, C, and then D or E. Oh, okay. All right. Stop at one minute. One minute. Five more seconds. Speeds, right? So the thing with circuits is you have to have a complete and continuous circuit. No breaks. Uh, and so the circuit here, this is the negative side, this is the positive side, it would look like this. Uh, our battery there, these are wires. Then you have a resistor here, and it would go right there. That was a non volt. No, it's a C, I said C or D cell. All right, you double the voltage across the conductor. You observe the current increases three times. What can you conclude about this device? Is it ohmic, non ohmic, or nothing to do with ohms off? Uh, no, it's no. It's, it's a conductor, which is the resistor itself. It's a device. A few more seconds, 140. All right, so this is a non ohmic device, and a non ohmic device just doesn't obey Ohm's law. And so, when it, if I double the voltage, but I get a three times increase in the current, that's Ohm's law says they're directly proportional, so that's not Ohm's law. Remember, we did talk about. Uh, diodes, which are a particular type of non-ohmic device. And let's see, so if I were to plot the resistance and the current, where this is positive current, this is negative current, I would get something that looks like this. I would get a very low current, for, or a very low resistance for a positive current. And then what would happen to the resistance in the second quadrant of this plot? It would do what, Captain? It would shoot up, right? Remember, because it would look something like that. Because remember, with a diode, we talked about this a bit, but with a diode, it only allows current in one direction. So this diode would allow current in this direction, but it would not allow current in this direction, because the resistance would go to infinity, basically, when current tried to flow in that direction. Yeah? Yeah. A diode? A diode is a, a device that you use in circuits that allows current to only flow in one direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are applications of diodes. Diodes, like for example, what? Is that a common thing y'all use a lot? LEDs are light emitting diodes. That's a type of diode. But in more general sense, a diode just allows current in one direction. But the light emitting diode actually produces light. Okay. Uh, I think we've had this question before, but let's try it again.
stop at 110, 110. Five more seconds. Okay, yeah, so D is the right answer. I mean, we've had this question before, and you could see something similar to it. Uh, I always like to ask myself first which one is the, the bigger of the two. And since the resistance of wire A is bigger, that means that wire A is a little skinny wire. So this is A. And wire B, because it has a, big, a smaller resistance, is much bigger. And then you want to ask yourself how the diameters compare. And then we go back to this. Resistance is rho L over A. And remember, diameter is proportional to, or this is proportional to diameter squared. So you get a, a half diameter squared turns into a 4 over here. Gives you 4 times the resistance. a little tricky. So think about this. Uh, here, the key is that you keep the vol you stretch this piece of wire out, and you keep its volume constant. All right, because it's like you, well, if you stretch it out, it has to, the volume of the wire has to remain constant unless it changes density. Uh, so it's like taking a big piece of metal and melting it and stretching it out long, lengthwise. So I wonder what happens to its re resistance. I'm going to remind you that V is equal to area times length, and if this is constant, if this is going up, this has to be going down by the same amount. So remembering that relationship, what happens to the resistance? I'll stop at 135, 135. Well, let's see. So my resistance is equal to rho times L over A. So our L is getting bigger, right? It says it's twice its original length. What is the area now? The area is half its original length. It's half its original area. Because of this, the constancy of this, if I get twice the length, I have to have half the area. And so let's see, what did y'all put? Let's try it again. So what happens to the resistance? I double its length, half its cross-sectional area. What's going to happen to my resistance of this thing? Stop at 30 seconds. Okay, very good. So E is the right answer. You know, both of those things are going to increase the resistance. I'm making it longer. Remember, a long hose is harder to push water through. I'm also making it skinnier. That also increases its resistance. And they both contribute a factor of two increase. Why do y'all put B? Okay, yeah, putting B just accounts for the length, just accounts for the increase in length. But because of this fact that you also have to increase the area when the volume remains constant, the amount of metal remains constant, then uh, it doesn't account for that decrease in area. So B is not the right answer. You rotate the 
knob of a light dimmer, what's being changed in the circuit? Power, current, voltage, or some combination of those. You have light dimmers in your houses? I don't either, but if you do. <laughs> my, yeah, my mom used to clean houses when I was a little kid, and I would get to go with her to like all the people's houses. And I always thought it was really novel because it was like the rich people's houses. No, they, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having to like clean your house. We just like come to our house too. But, um, and they always had those knobs. I liked to play with them when I was a kid. They had HBO too. I thought it was novel. Alright, uh, I'll stop at one minute. Oh goodness. I see we're all over the place. Uh, okay, well we know the power has to be changed, right? Because the power describes how bright it is. And so if you make it brighter, you're doing what to the power? You're increasing the power, right. Uh, similarly, the current is increasing. I've already said this, but the voltage is what in a household circuit? It's constant. So this isn't being changed. So it's just the power and the current. So that's A and B, that's D is the answer. Actually, you're physically changing what in the circuit? Actually physically changing something else in the circuit. The resistance. That's really what you're changing. These are just byproducts of changing the resistance. You know, my parents, they also used to ever tell you all about the banks? They would clean banks when I was a little kid. I was like, you know, eight or whatever. And we would go and, uh, my brothers and I, we could go and like play in the banks at night. Because when the people clean them, they go there at night, right? When there's no customers there. And I remember there was one bank, the president had one of their shoe shiners with the red and the black things on them. And you have a little knob, you know what I'm talking about? And I'd go in there with my old nasty, dirty sneakers and put them under the shoe shiner and, and clean them. I thought it was the coolest thing. We'd play up in the tellers windows and sometimes we'd find those money bags and the garbage would be taken home. Right, let's try this. Which has the greater resistance? 25 or 100 watt bulb? Forty-five. I'll stop it. Forty-five. Stop five more seconds. <laughs> so remember, that's the least dim, or the most dim, rather, of the light bulbs. And so they're not allowing more, uh, enough electrons to go through. They have a, a low resistance, the so twenty-five watt. In fact, if you look at a uh, at a light bulb, if you break them open, a 25 and a 100 watt bulb, or if you just have like a clear globe, you can see the difference in the wires. So the 25 watt bulb should have a uh, a bigger diameter wire or a smaller diameter wire. Right, smaller diameter because it has the larger resistance. It's not always true because sometimes they're made out of different materials or they're different lengths, but sometimes you can see that between bulbs. Okay, let's try this last one. Heater one has twice the resistance of heater two. Which one will give off more heat? I'll stop. 45. Yeah, 
Peter 2 is correct, B. Remember, the one with the lower resistance allows more electrons, and so it's going to have a larger, or excuse me, the one with the lower resistance, is that what I said? Has more electrons, so it's going to have a greater power. Or you can just think about it mathematically. P is V squared over R. This is one of our power expressions. If R goes up, that means P goes down. So the one that gives more heat is the one with the small resistance. If R goes down, P goes up. All right. I will post these on the website, these concept tests for chapters 2B and 3. And I will take a look at those for the test. Now, most of the tests, I say most, probably two-thirds of the tests will be Chapter 2B on capacitors. We spent more time on that. And chapter 3 is a pretty short chapter. Really, Chapter 3 is just supposed to be like a prologue to Chapter 4, which we're going to start now. All right. Uh, but go through the homework, of course. I like to just pull questions sometimes directly from homework. So these are pretty basic. We've worked through several problems that are similar to these. Let me make a couple points on four and five uh, here. On number four, it just asks you how much does it cost to run particular devices, and it tells you that the power company charges you per kilowatt hour. All right, so they charge, if you were to write this, they would say they charge you 12 cents. I think the rate is quite a bit more now per kilowatt hour. And so in order to find the total cost, you want to multiply this by the number of kilowatts, right? however number of kilowatts, so that cancels, and then by the number of hours, so that cancels, and then you're just left with a unit of cash. Right? And so you have to figure out what is the power and what is the <laughs> amount of time in hours here to multiply that. That's true for your you know, your household bill, too. That's how they do it. They usually give a rate in your energy bill. If you still get the paper bill, they'll give the rate. So sometimes that rate is variable, depending on when you use electricity. Right. And then on the next one, number five, uh, we're going to get into circuits next time. But here we have a 15-amp circuit breaker. So we talked about this in passing with the junction rule. If I have a series of resistors like this, I have a current that comes out off of the battery, and then I have three currents here, I1, I2 I'll call it, and I3. So those three currents, if you remember the junction rule said that the total current equals the sum of all the individual currents. So in your household, you have a whole bunch of circuits, and each circuit represents one of these. So like this would be one of those little switches in your breaker box. So you'd have a circuit breaker right here, a switch, and it turns off when you exceed a certain amount of current. All right. Um, so here it's asking if I have a 15 amp circuit breaker, that is if it exceeds 15 amps, I want to know how many light bulbs are there for this to exceed 15 amps. When does this exceed 15 amps? And then that'll tell you how many light bulbs you can have. We'll get more into that next chapter. Uh, this question really better falls in the next chapter, actually. Any questions? Chapter 3 is pretty straightforward. We just have definition of current, definition of resistance based on its dimensions, and based on a resistor by Ohm's law by its voltage and its current, and then power. That was, that was really it for this chapter. As I said, consider it to be about a third of this coming exam. So probably have one free response, one out of four free responses, and then maybe five out of 15 multiple choice. No, that was for uh, Literary Rally, which was this weekend. I don't have a PhD. The test, 
consider chapter three to be at about a third of the total test. So about maybe one free response. I haven't written it yet, but about one free response. Uh, that would be probably a combination of Ohm's law, geometric, like all those things that we've done. Uh, Ohm's law, R equals rho L over A, and power. I'd probably ask you questions regarding all those in the free response. And then the rest, probably capacitors. Remember capacitors, you'll have a big circuit. You might have a simpler circuit uh, that's, you know, a competition circuit, but, you know, just a few capacitors in it. And then uh, capacitance with dielectrics, capacitance given your dimensions, that sort of thing. Energy stored in a capacitor. <laughs> okay. Any questions? We'll spend Wednesday. I'll devote. If y'all have questions on Wednesday, if you want to revisit capacitor circuits, we can do that on Wednesday. If y'all have questions, we'll devote the time there to reviewing those things. But otherwise, we'll continue on with chapter four. Is that clear? All right. So chapter four, and we'll probably be having a, if we go to the state competition in Pineville, next to the prison, We'll probably have a day off. If it's on a Friday, so we'll probably just use that day off. So I know that we're getting a little bit ahead, and you know I won't let us get too far ahead of the exams. That sounds very safe, next to the prison. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It makes it sound like that. Yeah. It's so lighthearted. It's like, oh, it's just next to the prison. I visited the prison here in Wafush. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these prisons, but it's not somewhere you want to spend a lot of time. They're kind of depressing. Hey, I thought you were going to say some wonderful place to have TV and everything. They, I think they do have TV. I mean, I didn't see them. Right? I think they do, but TV gets old when you're there all your life. So my advice to you, don't go to prison. <laughs> Because people just do it on free They just go because they want to. Actually, it's a minor. Uh, my aunt's in prison. It's actually pretty good. Really? Yeah, it's actually kind of nice. There's a place in like Ireland, which is like a summer camp. Yeah, I'd rather just live my life instead of going to prison. It's like this really cool summer camp. All right. So we're going to look at DC circuits. And it'll get a little more difficult here with some of these circuits, but they're kind of fun too. Like I said, they're like puzzles. Once you get these rules uh, regarding resistors and series and parallel, and then uh, once you see, we're also going to do multi-loop circuits. Once you, you just have a couple of rules uh, guiding multi-loop circuits, which we've already done one of those. That's the, uh, the junction rule. Yeah, and then we'll add a second called the loop rule. Um, they're really pretty straightforward. They're kind of fun. Even. Um, so a battery or a power supply is a source of electromotive force. We've been using this all along, but we just haven't called it this. Because we want to introduce a new thing about batteries. And so we're going to let electromotive force be our substitute for our, what we've called just voltage of a battery before. So we use this symbol for the EMF. It's a, like a script E, or maybe epsilon. I'm not sure. Capital epsilon. Is that capital epsilon? Is it? Yeah, I'm not up on my Greek, but... Um, so batteries and power supplies, they have an internal resistance, R. So far, we've just talked about these things as if they have no resistance at all. But in reality, every power supply or battery has an internal resistance. Because it, you, know, you have wires inside of it, or you have you know, metals that, that just naturally have some amount of resistance. And this internal resistance causes a drop in the potential or a drop in the voltage. So if I were to look at a battery, like this is my actual battery, but if I were to draw out a schematic of what the battery looks like on the inside, I would have you know a little resistor here. This represents my internal resistance. And then this is my EMF. So the EMF describes the ideal battery with no internal resistance. EMF, let me write that in words. describes the potential difference
of, uh, of an ideal battery. With no internal resistance, little r. Basically, EMF is what we've been calling V all along. But now we're adding in this. And in fact, we'll return to calling that V. But I just want you to know that there is this internal resistance. That's why uh, when you use a battery, what happens to it after you use it for a long time? It what? It gets hot, right. So a battery will get hot after a period of time. <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, a battery will get hot after a period of time, and that's because it has this internal resistance. And the battery, some batteries, when they, like especially some of these rechargeable batteries, when they start to like no longer become useful, they'll get really hot because their internal resistance increases uh, beyond the useful range that it's supposed to be because it's just it's just not really usable anymore. And if your resistance increases, it just gets hotter and hotter. All right. Um, yeah, but I don't think that's the internal resistance of the battery changing. I think it's just it gradually loses. Does anybody know? I'm not. I'm not a mechanic. Well, I mean, just even a battery, just let's just not even take a car battery, just think of that like a double A battery. Uh huh. A drawer for a couple of years or so. It won't. It won't it work as well. Not, I yeah. I think that's the chemical processes inside of it. Just sort of lose their whatever they're on. What, Brittany? <laughs> what? Well, so I have a little clip about batteries. This is just for fun, sort of, but it's kind of interesting. Make sure it's I, I will. Thank you. Scott is the electrician this week. <laughs> Where's my playlist? I was about to say, but he didn't. That's a lot. This is just a little thing. I'm sure y'all have done this in grade school. Making a lemon battery, right? No. No, we never did Goodness, that. did y'all not do this? <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, that's just for your information. No, you won't see any of the chemistry on the exam. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of chemistry there. Yeah. So in this battery, if we want to know the terminal voltage, the terminal voltage, delta V, is going to equal to the IMF, that, or not IMF, the EMF, the electromotive force. That's the ideal voltage of the battery if it had no internal resistance, minus the potential drop across that internal resistance. So the terminal voltage is this. I think that's on your equation sheet, actually. Uh, you can think of it as, if we think of our electrons coming along, they see an increase in energy here. And then as they travel along, they see a decrease in energy across the resistor. They actually lose energy when they go across the resistor, causing the battery to, to heat up, usually. All right, so that's the terminal voltage. So I, um, I is the internal resistance. This is the voltage across the internal internal resistance. This is the internal resistance itself. It's usually small, but non negligible sometimes. You know, I think you got confused in the, um, the equation sheets because this is chapter 5 where all these equations are. Seriously? No, chapter 5 is not magnitude. Yeah, I mean, and then for chapter four, we have some of the ones. Oh, yeah. Chapter three. Chapter one, chapter two. Yeah, this, this chapter uh, two, where it says two through three, should just be three. Uh, and then this should, the chapter four should be three, chapter five should be four, chapter six should be five. I'm sorry, chapter seven. I, I, I mean, I just want to put it out. Let's do it all together. And I'll, I'll try to bear it up before the exam. Was the same way on the exam? Uh, yeah. Probably. You don't pay. You, 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 you don't use the equation sheet. Yeah, I never press with time. I'm not saying All right. I know that's happening now that I'm relaxed, you know.
Alright, so I've already said this, but uh, we normally, we've assumed that the internal resistance is zero, but now we're not going to do so. Um, let's try this quick test. I have an ideal EMF source of 12 volts. However, when I flow a current of 4 amps through it, the actual potential difference is 10 volts. What is the internal resistance of the battery? By the way, if you have a voltmeter, I know most of you don't have voltmeters in your car anymore, do you? You have a voltmeter. So what happens like when you turn the AC on to your voltage? It drops some, a little bit. Or it might drop a little bit and then come back up as the alternator. Hmm? Uh, I guess they had two little voltmeters in the... About five more seconds, y'all. One fifty five, I'll stop. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> All right, V is right. So uh, our actual potential difference is ten volts, that's delta V. And it's gonna equal to the EMF minus the drop across the uh, the internal resistance is going to be 12 volts minus 4 amps times R. And so solving that for R, we get a half an ohm. All right, so you get a 2 volt drop across that, that internal resistance. And as I said, if you see this in your car, if you have a volt, uh, an analog voltmeter, you can actually see the, the voltage will drop when you turn things on in your car, like your air conditioner, which draws a lot of current. And so that will increase the current through the battery, which increases the potential drop across the internal resistance of the battery. All right. Same is true in your house, actually. We'll talk about this a little bit more, but uh, technically this shouldn't happen in your house. But have you ever seen, like, when you say you're in your bathroom and you turn on your little bathroom, your electric bathroom heater, what happens? The lights dim just a little bit because you've increased the current coming off of the, uh, the power supply of your house. And your house has a certain internal resistance, and so that lowers the overall voltage. Uh, that's given to your house. Not by very much. Turn but on the washer and dryer at the same time. If you have an electric, the washer doesn't pull that much, but the dryer pulls a lot of current. Yeah. Turn on that. All of a sudden, all the lights in the house dim. Mm -hmm. Mom's washing clothes. No, that shouldn't happen actually, because you're. We have an old. Huh? Unless you have a, Unless you have a gas dryer, right? But I, right. I would have thought that that was in the Brisbane circuit. Yeah, that shouldn't happen with an electric yeah, dryer. Yeah, house, though. Oh, okay. 30 years. All right. So uh, let's look at this circuit. Or, no, we'll, we'll stop there, guys. We're done, basically. Remember, so if you if you want to review the exam, you need to bring questions. I'll sort of spend five minutes going over sort of what to expect on the exam. But otherwise, uh, I'll be here for your questions. But we will have class. Like, we'll continue on with Chapter 4. Thirty-seven years.